swear from your testimony before the court be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing else. All right, a state ready to proceed. State's ready, Judge. That's ready to proceed. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. All right, let's take your first witness. Please. Judge of State of Texas calls Deputy Galvan. Very well, thank you. Deputy Galvan, could you please introduce yourself to the members of the jury? Yes, my name is uh, Pete Galvan. And Deputy Galvan, briefly, could you tell us how you're currently employed? Uh, currently, I'm employed with the Harris County Sheriff's Office. I've been there nearly 27 years, and I'm assigned to a uh, jail intelligence unit. So, tell me again what your current assignment is. I'm assigned to a jail intelligence unit. What does that mean? Uh, I work with uh, outside agencies as well as our own agencies. And uh, mainly, my primary responsibility is to uh, monitor inmate phone calls. Um, per our office's request, were you requested to monitor phone calls for a defendant by the name of Leon Jacob? Yes. And did that request come from an investigator with the Harris County District Attorney's Office named Brian Powell? Yes. So during the course of your employment, did you monitor phone calls by defendant Leon Jacob with a spin of 01651455? Yes, I did. And as, um, before you came to court today, did I have you review phone calls that were made by the defendant from the Harris County Jail? Yes. And were you able to match up the um, discs with the phone calls that were actually made from the Harris County Jail? I did. And were you able to identify that these were phone calls made by inmate Leon Jacob? Yes. Judge, may I approach the witness? You may. I'm going to show you what I've marked as State's Exhibit 78, 79, and 80. Are these the discs that you reviewed prior to coming to court today? Yes, they are. And do they fairly and accurately depict phone calls made by the defendant in this case? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, State offers State's Exhibit 78, 79, and 80 and tender to opposing counsel for any objections. We have no objection, Your Honor, as long as we remind the court that we do have a motion in file, uh, the motion to suppress on certain jail calls. Okay. Anything we're devolving attorney client privilege, of course, Your Honor. Thank you. Stage 78, 79, 80, with a minute. Yeah, I know. Happy together. Well, this all, this all, this all go away. I told Adam I want Bradley Cooper to play me in the TV movie. Yeah, I know. Did he tell you? He's already, he's already played you. Hello, this is a pre- intro to this. Is this the intro that's played before every inmate makes a phone call? Yes, it okay, is. Okay, let, let me play that for the Hey, let's call from an inmate at Harris County Jail. Hello, this is a pre- The Harris County Sheriff's Office will not call you collect or request you to dial star 72. Be aware of a star 72 scan where you will be requested to hang up and dial star 72 or star 1172. <laughs> Uh, what did she say about me when she first, because I was here, it was like loud, I couldn't, I couldn't hear what she said, she read. She said about, uh, about me being beautiful. She said that you're a cocky son of a bitch. No, she did not. <laughs> she said that you were cocky and she was immediately turned off because she thinks that you knew how beautiful you were. <laughs> Is that what she said? Yeah. I was beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty beautiful. <laughs> so that reporter on ABC 13, Caitlin, she yeah. wants her to see me every day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she wants to sleep with me. Okay. But I'm... <laughs> I've Googled it. I've tried. I've Googled it. Well, it's... 
maybe suppress anything else coming out. You're not going to hear anything. According to Caitlin, what's her last name? Caitlin? Yeah. She's yeah, the chick. I mean, look her up. She's cute. She looks like Valerie when she was younger. Yeah. She's really hot, actually. I mean, I know my wife's dead, and I have some more of her, but this one's cute. Yeah. 29, she's got integrity. She never lied. She never came here in her false precinct. Like, every other goddamn news crew. But, um, All right. I looked at her, and I told her yesterday, I said, I said, you want this story, don't you? She goes, yeah. I go, what, what is it about me? She goes, you fascinate me. I go, why? She goes, you just do. She goes, I, she goes, I'm going to be honest with you. She goes, it's off the record. She goes, at first, she goes, I thought you were some, like, playboy who was, like, using Valerie for her money and all that stuff. She goes, but I realized that she truly loved you. He loved her. He said, she said, she goes, and then I found out you were really a doctor or a transplant surgeon, that you were really, you know, you go to the insurance business. She goes, I realized you make more money than she did. Stop it. Like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You want to clear off one of those boxes on that? <coughs> you, you certainly are free to sit. All right, thank you. Well, I didn't mean that. Sure. But, well, I just wanted to make sure you could hear what's happening, but is that right? right. Thank you. Yeah. I'll more than, I, don't, I can't make him feel, you know, I'm a very calculating scientific person. You know, Papa's a lot of papers. Are... An inmate at... But you, you only have to do it your way. Mom, I, you've heard part of the story. You mean you've heard the ending? Yeah, I've heard part of the story, but I also know what went on before. And I remember myself begging you, begging you, begging you. Whatever. Hello? Hey, Pensacola, how are you doing? Hey, doing well, how are you? You stood me up last week. Oh my goodness, they had me on all kind of stuff yesterday with the, or last week with all the flooding. I know, yeah, I got, I got, I got, we were down in wherever, I got, uh, I got side swipes for the small town that was flooded. Yeah, we, uh, I can't even tell you. I know, I saw, I saw it on TV. Okay, okay, well how's it going? It's going okay, you coming by? I can't today, they put yeah. me on something else, um, I'm hoping to come by tomorrow. That's fine. I might be with my lawyers in the afternoon, but we should be done by four when they let you see me. Um, okay. Is there, um, is there, if I come right before, or right, yeah, right before four, um, because before I've been coming like an hour and a half in advance just to make sure uh, nobody else tried to see you first. If I come right before four, am I going to be okay? I don't know. I don't know how it is downstairs. You know, they don't, it's not like they let us like wander around the place. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. They, I, uh, know, so, so, like, I got a letter you... from 2020 from that guy. You know, they, oh, from my yeah. I don't I don't know if you know, but 48 hours and like CNN and then 2020 came by to talk to me, but I wouldn't talk to any of them. And I thought yeah. that, you know, pissed off your like 2020 people, and um, they like told you to stay away from me. So I uh, but they, oh you know, no, I, I not didn't at all. Anybody. Uh, okay, well, I appreciate that. Um, no. want to let you know that obviously I'm still on that. You still you have me, don't you? <laughs> I, I do. The jail I have a full beard now because you couldn't do any worry. of this stuff um, to anywhere. But I think there is a book or at least something really likely to be very profitable to you and, and advance your career and maybe make some money and then in the end if, if it's good enough. But, you know, I'd be willing to have I did now, but as far as you being interested in writing a book or something about this screenplay or something, um, he said that he could write up an agreement between the two of us that would, you know, between you and, and him and, and me that would, you know, limit you, your ability to, to to release anything until it was, you know, not in my, it was, wouldn't harm me. And like I said, Caitlin, you know, I, this, when you hear this story, you're going to, 
I hate to use the term, you crap your pants. It's a good story. It's something you want to read a book about. And but and I told you I would do this stuff because you were honest with me and you were an honest journalist. You still have dinner when I get out. But um, it's not going to be just on this. But I, um, I hope, you, hope you're smiling. But anyway, just coordinate with George and we can start doing some preliminary work on a story. And then as far as the interview goes, yeah, but I would like I would like it to be, if I get a bond and get out of here, I would like it to be like, you and I sit down in the studio for 2020 and right. sort of break your well, career. I mean, that, that's, I, know, I figured that's something you'd want, that's what you would want. For the record, I'm not publishing States Exhibit number 79. I don't know, I don't know either. Well, you also have my power of attorney. You do all my civil stuff. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, Speaking of which, you got a speeding ticket when you went to wherever it is you went to. And I just got a bill for $162. Wait, from where? They took... I don't know either. Well, you also have my power of attorney. You do Hello. This we get one good book when I saw this. Uh, oh, God, Leon. Look, you, Leon. It's always been this way with you. You've got this big fucking mouth, and you don't know when to shut it. And even when people who love you tell you, Leon, stop talking like that. Don't say those things. Stop it. You can't control yourself. You know, but what I told you is what you've been charged with is worse than if you had actually done it yourself. Hello. Hello. I know. 48 hours, Kate. They want to do a huge special on me. Um, like a, like now, like about who uh, I am. No. Like that. No, no. Sorry, sorry talking to them. They want okay. to pay me. For the record, you're not publishing statement number 80. Because they tried to attack me. I hate doing shit like that. Fuck out of somebody last night because they tried to attack me. I hate doing shit like that. I put two people in the fucking hospital already because I've been here. I just don't like doing shit like that. It's not yeah, like self esteem. But it's either me or them. Uh, I, I understand. I understand there have to be parameters. You know, I'm fighting for my life in here, literally. And um, right. I just can't afford it because the thing I'm, I'm going to tell you is going to make a great book. You're going to write when it's all said and done. Judge, I pass the witness. Yes, sir. Good morning, Deputy. It was Galavan? Galavan, yes. Galavan. Um, how long have you worked with Harris County Sheriff's Office? Um, almost 27 years. And how long have you been with the jail division? Uh, with this unit, I've been there. I've been doing the phone call since 2005, 13 years. And so you have some knowledge of how jail operates then? Well, there's a lot of areas of the jail. It depends on what you're talking about. Would you agree with me, though, that a jail environment is not exactly the most safe environment? Sure. There's fights that happen. Sure. People do get attacked. Yes. And people have to defend themselves. Yes. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a stressful situation to be in, is it not? I've never been in jail. <laughs> well, from overseeing jail phone calls, are people typically happy? Yes. Some are, some are not. I mean, I've heard it all. But you hear a lot of frustrations as well. Yes. And so people can voice those frustrations over the phone. They can say a lot of things, is that correct? Sure. And the jails are kept separate, men and women, is that correct? The cell blocks, they're cell kept block separate, right? yes. So there's not a lot of interaction between males and females? I don't walk around the jail, I have no idea. But you, would, you could understand why there wouldn't be much interaction? Yes. And so for somebody to talk on the phone and flirt with an opposite sex, would that be something bizarre? Would that be out of the ordinary from your experience? I, could, I couldn't speak for what someone else would feel or what they want to do. Yeah. But you could understand how somebody would choose to flirt over the phone? Being that I don't understand it, no. 
You do not understand. I do not understand how a person can do that. How somebody can flirt over the phone? Flirt over the phone? Yes. Me personally, no. But through your experience of monitoring jail calls, is it typical to hear people have conversations in that nature? Uh, usually I go past that if I'm listening to a call because it's not something that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Usually looking for the safety of the inmates and staff in the institution. But if I hear someone just talking about their personal relationship, I kind of skip past so you, it. You tend to skip over it. Okay. Yeah. But it does happen. Sure. I imagine it would. You did mention that you tend to skip over parts of conversations. Did the state ask you to skip over anything in this case? On this particular case, there were so many calls. I didn't listen to any of the calls. I only provided them with the calls that they requested for and let them do their own research. So my original question was, did the state ask you to skip over anything? No. And you didn't even listen to these phone calls, did you? No, not prior to the ones that were played this morning. I listened to those this morning. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. Could you please state your name for the record? Megan Louise Vericus. And Ms. Vericus, are you the same uh, Megan Vericus that testified in the guilt phase of this trial? Yes, I am. I want to talk to you now about the aftermath of this. And I'd like for you to tell the jury how the actions of the defendant in this case have affected your life going forward from March of 2017. I have no sense of trust. Um, just constantly afraid that something else is going to happen. I, um, to, I'm sorry. I have security throughout my home that I never had previously just because I'm afraid somebody's going to break in or something's going to happen. So. I want to step back a little bit and let's talk about the night the assault occurred. Can you tell us what happened that night? I came home from work and um, Lee and I got in an argument over, he said he didn't like the way my face was um, and had been yelling at me. So I uh, had made a decision that I wasn't going to be spoken to like that anymore. Um, so I tried to pack my things up and leave. Um, at that point, he's screaming at me, um, calling me just awful names. Um, and I went into our bathroom and just trying to get makeup and contacts, um, any, anything I could, because I wasn't sure how long I was going to be gone. And at that point, um, I was screaming because I knew the neighbors below us um, could hear. And... I wanted them to call the police. I wanted them to hear what he was saying to me. Um, and at that point, he put his hands over my face and told me to shut the fuck up. And um, let me stop you there. What kinds of things you said you wanted the neighbors to hear what was he was saying to you? What kinds of things was he saying to you while you were having this argument? Um, you bitch. You know, you're go ahead and try and leave. Just it's just awful. <laughs> Did he make any threats to you about what he would do to you if you left him? He had told me that he would burn the apartment down. So when you're gathering your things up in the bathroom, is that when he approached you? Yes. And walk us through what he did when you're in the bathroom packing up your things. Um, I had a duffel bag on my shoulder and um, he uh, said, let me help you, you bitch, and starts throwing things and pushing things into the bag um, and then I started screaming and he was like shut up shut up you dumb cunt shut up nobody's gonna hear you and did he put his hand on your mouth yes did it hurt yes did it leave a mark yes so what did you do in response to him grabbing your face I think I bit him and ran out of the house where did you go um, I went to my vehicle, and at that point, he um, 
followed me outside. Um, our dog also followed me. Um, the dog jumped in the car. Um, at that point, I'd locked my doors and tried to back out, and he told me if I didn't give him the dog that he would punch the window in, and he kept slamming his fist against the driver's side window and pulling on the car handle. Was he able to break the window? No. Did you think I released the dog, and he took the dog. Where did you go from there? Uh, I stopped at the security gate of the apartment complex. Um, Leon was on the speakerphone screaming, yelling, um, and I wanted the security guard to hear it. Um, but I knew it would take too long for the police to get there. Um, and my door wouldn't shut because he pulled on it so hard that the electronics wouldn't close. Um, so I drove to his mom's house about a quarter of a mile away. Why did you go to his mom's house? Because I didn't have anybody else here, and I thought they cared about me. Where is your family? My family lives in Pittsburgh. So your mom and dad, they live up in Pittsburgh? So yes. You, you don't have any family here? I do not. What happened once you got over to Miss Jacobs' house? Um, I had a key to their home, but I believe uh, their Leon's stepdad, Dale, let me into the house. Did you stay at the house? I did not. Where did you go from there? Um, his brother happened to be uh, there for some reason, and um, his brother sort of told Leon to leave me alone. And at that point, um, I went to Adam and Leslie's house. Was Leon over at uh, Miss Jacobs' house? Yeah, he said his mother called him. So had he followed you over there? I believe so. Did you go over to Adam's house? Yes. Who lives at Adam's house? Um, his, his two daughters and Leslie and Adam. Once you got over to that house, how long did you stay there for? Um, I was there for two days. Did the defendant try and reach out you to you during that time period? Yes. What efforts did he make to try and, and talk to you? Um, he was calling. He was texting. He left um, the second day. He had left flowers in a bag of my clothing on their front steps. And then he also showed up at their home. Let's talk about that. When did he show up at the home? Um, I believe it was Friday evening. And had you told him at that point that you didn't want contact with him? Multiple times. What did you tell him? Not to talk to me. Please leave me alone. Uh, we're done. What made this the final straw for you? Um, I had sought therapy and... I didn't want to live this life, and the fact that he put his hands on me, that was the last straw. So that was the first time that he had ever put his hands on you? He had thrown things at me and screamed and yelled, but he had never physically put his hands on me. Were you concerned that he might show up at their house? Definitely. And did he show up at their house? Yes. Tell the members of the jury what happened when he showed up at their house that night. It was just Leslie and I and the baby, and basically um, Leon kept banging on the door. Um, eventually Leslie let him in, and I hid in a closet um, in their kitchen uh, just to stay away from him because I was afraid of what would happen if he found me. Could you hear the defendant in the house? Yes. What was he saying? Where is that fucking bitch? Did he seem angry? Yes. What was your mind like? What are you thinking when you're hiding in this closet in the kitchen? What's going through your mind? I hope he doesn't see my phone and my bag on the floor. <laughs> um, what's going to happen if he finds me? Did he eventually leave? Yes. So after he came to the house and he's looking for you and he's screaming, where do you go? Um, Leslie and I went upstairs and just tried to be calm. Um, at that point, I knew I couldn't stay there anymore because he knew where I was. So what did you do? I left and went to work the next day and um, stayed at a hotel. Because he was still in my apartment and I still had no clothing and nothing else. Did you at some point go back to your apartment? Um, I went back with police officers. And were you able to get your things? Um, they had changed the locks on the apartment. Um, 
at the time we walked in with the police officer, Leon had taken um, every, almost every piece of furniture that I owned. Um, he hadn't touched my clothing, um, but he did, uh, I found out that he had taken my passport and my eyeglasses. You mentioned the furniture. Who purchased all the furniture? I did. Half the furniture came from Pittsburgh and half the furniture um, was purchased from Ashley Furniture on a credit card in my name that I paid for. And what did he do with all that furniture? He put it on a truck and put it in a storage unit. Did he let you have that furniture back? He did not. He used that to try and get me to meet with him. Tell us about that. Um, Basically, he kept telling me, you know, you'll have nothing, um, you can't afford this, um, what are you going to do, just meet me and I'll give you the furniture back, just talk to me and I'll give you the furniture back. During this time period when all this is going on, is he continually texting you? He is. Um, Timeline-wise, I mean, I know that I changed my phone probably the Tuesday or Wednesday after all this happened, but throughout the weekend, he certainly wouldn't stop. Did you work an event that weekend? I did. Tell me about the event that you worked that weekend. Um, a friend of ours, Vladimir, owns a catering company and he had asked if I could help bartend. Um, so I was to go to uh, the location and just basically help them out. Um, it was on a Saturday night. I originally wanted to cancel because of the relationship between Leon's family and Vladimir. Um, but he said I would be okay and that he would protect me and nothing bad would happen if Leon showed up that he would have him arrested. During that time period, did the defendant try and contact you? He contacted me and um, I was working with an iPad that was Vladimir's and he had called Vladimir so much I couldn't even use the iPad because Leon's name kept showing up on the iPad. So you weren't able to do like transactions at the Correct. Phone? You mentioned that you changed your number, so the assault took place on Thursday night, so by Tuesday that following week you had changed your phone number? Yes. Why did you change your phone number? So that he couldn't contact me. Did he use other people to try and contact you? Yes. Who he you? called my work. Um, he had Valerie call my work. He had um, a woman named Laura, I believe, show up at my work. Um, he had his therapist call me. Um, his mother called me. Um, she didn't call my work, but he had anybody imaginable try and get in contact with me, people I didn't even know. He called my parents. He called my brother um, constantly. He called my friend Jen. Um, and left just voicemail after voicemail. Let's talk about Jen. Um, does Jen live, or did she at the time live here in Houston? She lived in Houston, and then she was um, moving to Colorado. During that time period, though, was she here in Houston? Uh, part of it. Did um, the defendant at some point believe that you had moved in with Jen? Yes. And. Did you learn that he made efforts to try and find you over at Jen's apartment? He actually went to the apartment and knocked on neighbors' doors. Looking for you? And Jen. You mentioned that he contacted your family. Who all did he contact? He contacted my mother, my father, my brother. I think he may have contacted my aunt as well. And they're all up in Pittsburgh? Correct. So what, what is his reasoning for contacting your family? He wants them to get in contact with me. Why? So that we could get back together and he could take care of me. You mentioned you changed your phone number. At some point, does he get a different email address to contact you? Yes. What email address does he create in order to try and make contact with you? I believe it was leonlovesmeganv at gmail.com. So was that an email address that he had prior to the breakup, or is that something he created post-breakup? Post-breakup. Um, did he also attempt to contact you from spoof numbers? Yes, uh, as well as LinkedIn, um, Facebook. Uh, he, would, he would register names under his children's names and then um, request me or message. Talk to me about spoof numbers. What are spoof numbers, if you know? 
Um, it's a number that shows up that may look like somebody else's. Um, at one point, he had been able to call me and make it look like it was my brother calling. So then would you answer thinking it's going to be your brother? Of course. Talk to us about while you're working, what are some of the things he does to you while you're at your office down at the Holiday Inn? He contacted the front desk and would say that he needed to talk to me. He would show up in the valet area. Um, his car would be parked in the adjacent lots nearby. Um, and each time one of my, I saw it or my colleagues saw it, we would contact the police. Did you have to take any steps to you know, protect yourself at work and keep you safe? Um, we alerted the security guard of what Leon looked like as well as what his vehicle looked like. Um, anytime I went outside the building, uh, because my job at the time required me to do sales calls, um, I, you know, I had to have somebody with me. Were you concerned that he knew where you parked? Oh, definitely. Um, I have my... Were you concerned about if he knew where you parked? Yes. Did you take any steps to try and hide your vehicle while you were at the office? Yes. What, what kind of things would you do? Um, they would park it in the basement or the roof instead of my assigned parking spot in the front of the building. Did you, someone have to go into hiding during this time? In other words, are you able to go back to the apartment and live in the apartment that you shared with him? No. Where do you go? Um, I stayed at a hotel. And um, at some point, um, were you concerned about your safety staying at the hotel? Yes. Talk to us about the time that um, he, you drove to the police station with him following you. What happened? Um, I pulled out of the hotel parking lot and his vehicle was immediately behind me. Um, as soon as I saw him, I called 911. Um, I stayed on the phone with dispatch um, and basically just drove in circles in downtown um, trying to get him to leave me alone and hoping that they could get a police officer there. Um, as I'm driving. At one point he jumped out um, in the street in front of my car um, and started yelling, you're making a big mistake, you don't know what you're losing. Um, and again, I was just hysterical on the phone with, with dispatch hoping that they could get a, a vehicle to where we were. Um, after about five, ten minutes, I pulled in front of the Travis Street Police Station and waited for an officer to come out. As I pulled in front of that, um, Leon stopped next to me, and I believe he yelled something like, this is the biggest mistake of your life. During this time period, what is your daily life like? I try to work, um, but it, it was always a concern that, you know, what happens if he finds me? What am I going to do um, for a place to live? How am I going to get back into the apartment? Um, what is the apartment complex going to do to me because I've broken my lease? And is he damaging the apartment to, to further hurt me? How many times did you tell him, do you think, approximately to leave you alone? Hundreds. And did he listen? No. Did you take steps to get a protective order because of that? Yes. And did you all come to an agreement on a two-year protective order? At the time, when we filed for it, um, the Beth Barron, the person that, that helped with it, um, she said, you know, don't worry, he's going to go to jail today for stalking. So I just wanted to sign it and have him go to jail. So the stalking case happened, he was uh, charged with the stalking case prior to the two-year protective order, but he was arrested that day. Right from jail, or right from the courtroom. Once he got out on bond for the stalking case, did he continue to harass you? I don't remember. I know he probably contacted my family. Talk to me about when the officers with the Houston Police Department called you and told you there's been a threat to your life. It was in the evening and I changed my number um, and was just afraid of anybody that called me and I had a lot of distrust in anybody. Um, did you meet with officer of the Houston Police Department? Yes. What was your reaction when you learned that this person that you'd been in a relationship with had taken a hit out on your life? I can't even explain it. I was hysterical. I'm, I'm sorry. 
Sorry, Mr. Farmer. Just call them for conclusion, Your Honor. And that'll be overruled. You may answer. I was hysterical. I didn't know what to do. When the police came and talked to you, did you take some steps to get out of town? They said I should be left alone, and obviously I don't have a roommate. I don't have family here, so um, I thought it best to go back to Pittsburgh and stay with my family. And did you stay up there for a while? Yes. Um, did you come back at the request of the Houston Police Department? Yes. And did, we talked about in the guilt phase of this trial that they had you take some photographs, right? Yes. What's going through your mind when they're putting duct tape around your face and zip tying your wrists and your ankles? What if this really happened? I mean, I, I was just, I, I mean, at one point, I don't think I could even. I, I just can't believe I was there. I pass the witness. From the defense, please. Yes, sir. It is very close. I've got the right pronunciation, correct? Vericus. Vericus. And if I mispronounce that as in guilt or innocence, please correct me, all right? It's fine. Um, now, when did you and Leon uh, officially meet? Sometime in January or February of 2014, I believe. All right, and uh, tell me the circumstances of your meeting. He was a guest at my hotel. He was a guest at my hotel. He was. And that's where you were working? Correct. And that hotel was the Holiday Inn downtown? It absolutely was not. Okay, what, what was it? It was the Cambria Suites in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, then you all <coughs> eventually started going out. Yes. And uh, at some point in time, uh, you all decided to move to Houston. Yes. And did you move together? Leon had been staying with his mother here, but yes. All right. So your family was in Pennsylvania. Correct? Yes. And Leon's family was in Houston. Yes. And at some point in time, you, uh, during this relationship, um, stayed with Gold. Yes. And that's Leon's mom, is it not? Yes. How long did you stay with Gold? Uh, five, six days, maybe, if that. Five or six days, maybe. All right. Um, when you stayed at Golda, obviously you, you slept there. Yes. And you had food provided for you. Yes. Um, was Golda hospitable to you? Yes. And um, obviously she let you stay there. Did you happen to call her and say, hey, I'm coming over? No. Oh, you just showed up, did you? When? When you stayed at Golda's. When I moved here from Pittsburgh? No, when you stayed, yes, when you first stayed at Golda's. I believe she knew. She had a key made for me. Okay. Um, now, uh, I believe you testify that you and Leon were together for about eight months. No, sir. About how long? For, I, can you repeat? Explain yeah, the question that you're asking. How many months? When? In in general? Yes. About two years. All right. And in Houston, how long were you together? Two and a half years. All right. Now, during that period of time, it's obvious that Leon was in love with you. That's yes. Be fair to say? Yes. And you had deep feelings for him as well? Of course. All right. And um, 
You talked to the police department uh, about this incident, correct? Which incident, sir? About what you're testifying about. The stalking, the harassment, like what I, the murder for hire, what, what was, what are you asking about? Did you ever uh, tell the police department, did you ever use the word threat? Yes. You did? Oh, well, he threatened to burn my house down. That's not my question. My question is, did you tell the Houston Police Department using the word threat? In the assault? Ever. Did you tell the police department using the word threat? I can't recall. Do you remember your testimony on direct examination on the guilt or innocence phase of this case on that issue? <clears throat> I, I need you to clarify a little bit more. Sure. When you were on guilt or innocence, when you were testifying on guilt or innocence, and you were asked about using the word threat, correct? I don't remember that, sir. Okay. Did you ever tell the police department using the word threat relative to Leon? I don't recall. Now, <clears throat> would it be fair to say that um, Leon was desperately in love with you, from your perspective? Yes. And all of these efforts that you testified about relative to Leon calling, contacting your parents to try to, that was to try to find you. Yes. All right. Now, uh, tell the ladies and gentlemen of this jury if uh, it's reasonable to contact your parents to try to find you in order to hurt you. You want me to rephrase that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, one doesn't contact the parents of a person that that individual wants to hurt in order to find your location. Does one? I'm going to judge the speculation. Sustain. Did you find it? Did, did your parents tell Leon where you were? Absolutely not. Did you find it odd that Leon would contact your parents? Yes. And why did you find that odd? Because I asked him multiple times to leave me alone. Okay. And he was desperate for you. He wanted you guys, as you've testified to, to get back together, to get back in contact, and basically uh, live your life together. That's what he wanted. And that's not what you wanted. <laughs> no, sir. All right. <clears throat> I might have just a moment, Judge. Do you remember testifying and I, I'll go back in a different way on, on this issue. You remember testifying in a direct examination that uh, you did not consider Leon's actions to be threat to you, using the word threat? I don't recall. When you went to Leslie's house, do you know if Leslie contacted Golda? I'm unaware. I'm sorry? I'm not aware. Okay. Who did? Do you know if Leslie contacted Leon? I'm not aware of their conversation, sir. Well, I'm not asking you if you were aware of the content of their conversation. I'm asking you if Leslie contacted Leon. I know that Leon contacted Leslie. OK. 
but I don't know vice versa. I was only there for what Leslie did, or and I wasn't with Leslie the entire time. Do you know whether or not Leslie asked Leon to come over? No, I do not. Uh, now, Leon was still wanting to develop a relationship with you, correct? Um, <clears throat> at some point in time, you emailed Leon uh, about, I guess, your passport and your glasses. Correct. Pardon? Correct. All right. And when was this? I don't recall. Was it during the period of time that you were staying, that you were separated from Leon? Yes, sir. It was after I went back into my home and realized my belongings were gone. Okay. And he found those, did he not, and returned them to you? I believe he had taken them out of the location they were, so he had them on his person. My, my question is, relative to the passport and glasses, he found them and returned them to you, correct? I would not say he found them. He returned them to you, did he not? I asked his sister or brother to return them to me so he had no contact with me or my work. All right. But in any event, you got your glasses and passport based on his actions about getting them to you through his relatives? Yes. Okay. Well, I have anything further. Thank you. From the state. Further, Judge. Stick out, Darren Gooden, Judge. Thank you. Your Honor, this was a, has not been sworn in. Where's your right hand, please? You swear upon your testimony to the court, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, I'll be back. State, Thank you, Judge. What is your name, sir? Darren Gooden. And uh, where are you from, sir? Ohio. Are you, were you born in Ohio? Yes. And uh, do you have a family there? Yes, I do. Are you married? Yes, I am now. Any children? Uh, yes, we have. I have a boy and a girl, and I have uh, four stepkids. Can you maybe move up to the microphone a little bit so everybody can hear you? Mm -hmm. uh, you said you have a you have a son and a daughter, correct? Yes. And how old are they? Uh, 19 and 17 now. 19 being your daughter and 17? Uh, my son is 19 okay. and my daughter is 17. And do they live in Ohio as well? Yes, they do. Okay. And where in Ohio are you from? Uh, Youngstown area, Poland, Ohio. You ever been to Houston before? No, I have not. Okay. Do you know the defendant Leon Jacob? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Could you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury how you became uh, aware of who he was? Uh, my ex-wife... Uh, Worked at a hospital uh, in Youngstown where he was a resident at the time, okay. and um, that's how I started to learn about him. Okay, now, so your wife at the time, what was her name? Uh, Patricia. Okay. She she worked at a hospital where he was in the residency program. Yes. What was your what was your wife's job there? She was a recruiter okay. for the residency program. So while they were working together, did you ever meet him uh, on a social occasion or? Uh, I just heard her talking a lot about him. Um, there might have been one occasion, I think, uh, when I was at the hospital to meet her for something, and I, she introduced me to him at that time. And what, what year was this, if you remember? Um, probably about 2011, okay. maybe. 2010, 2011. And uh, was there ever a time that you became aware of uh, a relationship between your wife and the defendant? Uh, yes, there was. Could you tell us how you found out about that? Uh, yes, I uh, took my son to the hospital one night. Uh, he was having a hard time breathing, and she didn't want to go to the hospital uh, with us. And when we ended up leaving the hospital, I got followed um, by uh, Leon all the way to my house, um, and then he sped off. Okay. And let, me, let, let me stop you there. So. You took your son to the hospital, and your wife at the time, Patricia, did not want to come with you. Correct. That, did that seem strange to you? Yes. Okay. And uh, this would have been the same hospital where she worked at along with the defendant? 
Uh, it was actually uh, a different hospital. Okay. Um, I don't know if he was working at the time at that one or not. Um, what I did was I ended up find, going through her phone records, um, and I found the phone number that she was on the phone with for a couple hours that night. Well, we were at the hospital, and I called it back, and Leon answered the phone. Okay, so uh, going back to when you were coming home from the hospital, you, you said you were being followed. Yes. Okay. And did you know at the time what kind of car the defendant was driving? Um, I heard my wife talk about what kind of car he had. Um, that then kind of put two and two together there. And uh, the person that followed you home from the hospital, the, the car that you saw, was that the same car that you believed the defendant to be driving at the time? Yes. And how far was it from the hospital to your house? Uh, approximately seven miles, eight miles. Okay. And did that car following you home, did it follow you the whole way home? Yes. And was it that same night that you had looked at some records to, to see if there was any suspicious activity on your wife's phone? Yes. Right. Um, did you ask your wife about this? Yes, I did. Did you call the number yourself? Yes, I did. Okay. And what was the conversation you had with the defendant at that time? Um... I asked him if him and my wife were having an affair, uh, what was kind of going on, and uh, he told me, uh, you need to talk to your wife about that. And you and your wife eventually split up not long after that, right? Correct. Okay. And um, was the divorce filed right away, or did you were you separated for some time? Um, I think I stayed, uh, we're still in the house probably maybe for about eight months or so. Uh, when, when, when I filed, I filed a divorce. Um, I probably left maybe uh, a month after we filed because I was told by our attorneys at the time to uh, try to stick it out in the house. Okay. And when we're referring to the defendant, Leon Jacob, do you see that person here in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. Could you go ahead and identify him by something that he's wearing? Just, I'm sorry, what's just that? Identify him by something that he has on today. Just say that's the man wearing such a blue tie. Okay, right over here at the table. On the end. Okay. Your Honor, may the witness record reflect the witness identify the defendant? Record was over. Right. And are you aware, so you you, you and your wife separated, correct? Correct. Uh, were you aware at that time whether or not your wife continued to see the defendant? Um, I, I pretty much knew that they were still together, okay. that they were dating. And did you At that time, did you spend any time around her and the defendant together? Did you see his vehicle around the house, that sort of thing? Um, the house, the, when I left the house, yeah, the vehicle was at the house pretty much every day. Okay. And at the time, how old were your children while this was going on? Um, Twelve and fourteen. And so, um, what was the what was the custody agreement like when you were separated while the divorce was happening? Uh, they made it very difficult for me to see the kids. Um, they wouldn't let me see them on my certain days. They. Uh, and when you say they, who are you referring to? Um, <clears throat> Leon and my, and my ex-wife. Okay. Position. Um, they would bribe them. Um, my kids told me that you know they would take them out to eat, or or if they if they run away back home, you know, uh, Leon would buy them certain stuff, whatever they wanted. Um, it was just like whatever they really wanted. They would they ma manipulated them, I guess. So. You do you think, based on the circumstances, that the defendant, along with your ex-wife, was interfering with your ability to see your children? Mm -hmm. um, and so, but you did have visitation. Was it 50-50, yes. that sort of thing? Yes. Okay. What sort of personal interactions did you have with the defendant around that time, if any? Um, I, I had some. You mean what did I? I'm sorry, rephrase it? When you actually personally interacted with him, can you tell us about those situations? Um, I had some restraining orders that I had to put in place. Um, following us around, uh, sitting in front of the house, type deal. A couple of threats, he threatened us. Uh, threatened to blow up my house, threatened to kill me. Okay. Threatened uh, to blow up your house, and this is the house now, you're, you're now living in a separate house correct. when you're separated from your wife. Yes. Um, how about when you went to pick up the children at any time? Did you ever encounter him on those occasions? Yes. And, and what was that like? Uh, he'd be standing outside, yelling, screaming, you know, making threats towards me. What, what sort of things would he say to you? Uh, he said he wanted to uh, kill me. He said he wanted to fight me. Um, just uh, 
just bad mouth and swearing, you know, calling me all kinds of names and stuff like that. Did you ever engage him back in those discussions? No. Okay. Uh, was there ever a time that uh, the police were called on an incident regarding your son? Every time, okay. pretty much, yes. Okay. And could you tell us about an occasion where, are you aware of an occasion where um, the police were called shortly after your son had left your house? Uh, yes. Could you tell us about that? Um, my son showed up at the house for my visitation. Uh, they ran home, uh, went and, back to their mothers. And so when you're clear, again, you're, you're talking about your son and your daughter. Yes, okay. they both left. They ran back. It was probably maybe like maybe a mile and a half okay. or so back to the other house. Okay. Um, about a half hour later, uh, the police showed up on my, my doorstep and they said he got hit in the chest. Uh, Leon punched my son in the chest uh, twice, I think he said. And they tried to blame it on me to get uh, child endangerment on me, so I would not be able to see my kids. And um, you were never charged with that or anything related to that, correct? I'm sorry, what's that? You were never charged. You never had no, a criminal charge regarding that. Not at that all. Well. No. Okay. And uh, eventually, were you able to get full custody of your children from your ex-wife? Yes, I did. Okay. And um, you mentioned that you had to get restraining orders, you had, you had to pursue things legally against your ex-wife as well as the defendant, right? Yes. Um, was there any, any sort of order in place regarding the defendant's ability to be around your children? Yes, he was not allowed around my children when uh, my wife had the visitation. And that was pursuant to an order, a protective order or a, a restraining order that you had pursued on their behalf? Yes. Okay. I'll pass it with Judge. Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> Now, you testified today that Patricia, your ex-wife, was having an affair with Leon? Yes. And that went on for about nine months? I'd say probably more like two years. About two years? And that was why you guys were filed for divorce? Uh, well, at first, I had suspicions, like I said, at one year. Mm -hmm. And then this when we went through the divorce, it lasted over, over a year. So during this time, you, of course, didn't think the highest of Leon, I'm sure. I'm sorry, what's that? You didn't have the greatest opinion of Leon at this time, I'm sure. Uh, now, <clears throat> you also testified that during this time, both Patricia and Leon were manipulating your kids to keep them from you? Yes. Is that grounded in fact, or is that just your opinion? Uh, that's a fact. And while this was all going on, you were dating a new girl at the same time? A new woman? Yes. What was her name? Holly. And how did Holly get along with your kids? She got along good with them, real good. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. <clears throat> Do you recall having a text message with your daughter back in February? In fact, that's going to be a message from Mackenzie, is that correct? It says Mackenzie's name on it. I don't know who it was sent to. This would be sent to you. I believe these are screenshots that you had taken and sent to the state's attorneys. Um, I don't recall that message. Okay. Do you recall <laughs> responding to her, this message? Um, possibly. Okay. Do I have to be flipped on the attending to opposing counsel question? Were they more? Yeah, not marked this time, Your Honor. They were reached earlier. Mr. Goodin, did Mackenzie ever have an issue with Holly? Um. At the beginning, no, she did not. But towards the middle, in the end? Um, once um, her mother found out that um, we started dating, yes. Then she began to have an issue? Yes. In fact, do you recall having a conversation with Mackenzie, where she talked negatively about the relationship with Holly? Um, they were going through a lot at the time. Um, I mean, there was, there was a lot of stuff that went on. You know, they're mi they're mixed emotions, you know. Mm -hmm. And how would you classify <clears throat> Mackenzie's view of you during this time period? I'm sorry, what's that? How would you, how did Mackenzie feel about you during this time period? Judge. 
Sustain. Um, sustain. You said that Leon, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sir, if I sustain the objection, means you don't have to answer. Now, in response to a text that Mackenzie did send to you, would you go ahead and read that portion of your response to the jury? Can they read it out loud? Or yes, please, would you read that loud for the jury? Uh, no, Mackenzie. Uh, but I give your mom 700 a month, and you embarrass. You need to speak into the microphone. Uh, no, Mackenzie. Um, but I give your mom 700 a month, and you embarrass me by the way you act. You don't call or answer your phone. Uh, when I call you. Thank you. And then, <clears throat> do you also recall sending a message to Mackenzie on March 11th? But that was in response to because uh, Leon and her mother took their phones off of me. So every time I text them and call, they, 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 they would never answer their phones. That's that's why you sent that message? It was not in response to what Holly had said to you? Oh, sorry, not Holly, but there Mackenzie? Were, I have thousands and thousands of texts. So, I don't know if these are in order or what. These are in order. As fact, as you can see, the ending of this message mm -hmm. continues on to this, which is what you directly said, responding back. Okay. Same date, same time. Okay. So this was not, in fact, a response to Leon. This is a response <coughs> to Mackenzie, your daughter. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and read, then, what Mackenzie had sent to you, since you disagree with that. Judge, I, I think what the witness said is that the content of the message is referencing something he found out about Leon, not that the message itself was in response to Leon. Correct. Correct. I withdraw. And in fact, do you remember having a conversation again with Mackenzie, March 11, 2012? Would you mind reading these messages to the jury? <clears throat> Mackenzie, I have done nothing to you. Mackenzie, I have done nothing done nothing to you or, or Darren. You or Darren won't answer when I call or text you. But I love you kids more than anything. There isn't a second that goes by that I, I am not thinking and worrying about you. I wish you guys would give me... This one obviously doesn't go with that one. It still continues on. This is uh, I said, I wish you guys would give me a, then it says, and hate that both of you. So there's obviously another text that goes okay. with that. Well, feel free uh, to continue reading. Um, are acting like this, you don't even give me a, a chance. I'm sorry for whatever has, has you think. Thinking I am such a bad guy, I have never hurt you or put you or your brother in danger. All I want is my kids to be a part of my life. So it's fair to say that you did have issues with Mackenzie and Darren during this time period? Uh, yes. At uh, this time, Your Honor, defense will offer Defense Exhibit 10 and Defense Exhibit 9B. I thought they were already admitted. Yes, sir. So during this time, your wife was having an affair with Leon Jacob, and you want to blame him for your relationship with your children. Is that fair to say? For what? For your relationship with, with your children. Is that fair to say? Um, you blame him? You believe he was manipulating them? Well, he, he was keeping them from seeing me. You, you believe that? Uh, sure, I do. Now, you also testified earlier that Leon had punched your son in the chest. Yes, he had. And police showed up at your door. After they called the cops, yes. Did you ever press charges against Leon? Um, that was all worked out through the courts. Um, so, Leon struck your child, and you decided not to go forward and try and pursue charges? It was worked out through the courts. So, no charges were filed? Um, yes or no? Were charges filed? Uh, I don't remember. So no, charges were not filed. That's a question. Yeah. <coughs> so, are you still asking the question, or are you doing more? Oh, we'll move on, Your Honor. Okay. Now, you also testified earlier that Leon was screaming and threatening you, that he, I think you said he wanted to kill you, is that correct? Mm -hmm. 
And this happened outside? Mm -hmm. In a public place? Yes, sir. Yes. This happened in a public place? I, I, my old residency. Your old residence? Mm -hmm. Yes. But you never called the police again? Yes, there was a report made. There was a report made? Yes. Were charges ever filed? That I do not remember. Who was your brother? Uh, he was a chief of uh, Poland Township. Chief of what? Poland Township Police Department. Okay, so your brother was a chief of police? Yes. And so when these threats were made, you called your brother? No, he would have called uh, a patrolman. My brother did not get involved in anything that, uh, that I did. But your brother was a chief of police? Yes. Was there any kind of court proceeding regarding these threats of Leon wanting to kill you? Um, I filed restraining orders. You did file restraining order? Yes. Did Leon ever have to go forward and testify to this matter? Um, I do not remember. Did you ever have to go to a court proceeding and testify? Um, I went in front of a person when I did get out in front uh, file for the restraining order. Was that just to an officer or was that to the court? To the courts. But you never went forward on the criminal allegation of the threat to kill you? Um, honestly, I do not remember what happened with that, with all that. I'll pass the way to Sean. Nothing further, Judge. Sir, you thank you for your testimony. Is he free to leave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> thank you. All right, next Stick calls Mackenzie Gooden, Judge. Hi, Mackenzie. Hi. You doing okay? Yes. You a little nervous? Yeah. Okay. H how old are you? I'm 17. Okay. What is your full name? Mackenzie Ann Gooden. Okay. And uh, are you in school right now? Yes. And, and where do you go to school at? Poland Seminary High School. Okay. What, and what year are you? I'm a senior. And uh, you have any plans for after high school? Yes, I plan on continuing at YSU and I'm going to the nursing program. And uh, do you work? Yes, I do. And where do you work at? A restaurant in our town called La Rocas. Okay. Uh, now, the, the gentleman that was just in the courtroom, who is that to you? My father. Okay. And who is your mother? Her name is Patricia Gooden, or Patricia Dobis. Okay. Her, that's her new name. She got married. I don't know her new name. Though. Okay, that's her maiden name then. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you have any siblings? I do. I have a brother named Darren Gooden. He is um, 19, and I have four stepsisters. Okay. Uh, now, are, and you're living in Ohio at the time, right? Yes. Okay. And you were born there, I assume, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, back several years ago, I'm going to take you back to like around 2010, 2011. You would have been about 12 years old, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, could you tell us, well, let me ask you first, do you know the man named Leon Jacob? Yes. Okay. And could you tell us or tell the jury how you know him? I knew him through my mom. Okay. And how was it that you came to know him, if you could tell us? He was introduced to me as my mother's friend. And were you aware at the time of your, your parents being separated? Do you remember that when, they, when your father moved out of the house? Yes, I do. Was it around the same time that this happened, he was introduced into your life? Around that time, yes. Okay. And uh, what... What sort, of, uh, what sort of interactions did you have with the defendant during that time period, if you could tell us? He would come over and they would, like, we would go out to certain places and dinner and stuff. Okay. And what did you think of him when you met him? Well, I couldn't understand why he was around us so much when he had like a wife and stuff. I couldn't wrap my head around that. Okay. Now, when you, okay, you say you didn't understand why he was around your family so much when he had a wife. Did you know his wife? Yes. And who was that? Her name was Annie. Okay. How, how was it that you knew who his wife was? I was introduced to her through okay. um, Leon and my mom. We went over there multiple occasions having dinner together. So at the time you were little, you didn't really understand why this guy was over here when he had his, his own wife? 
Correct. Um, and he had a child at the time, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, what was your understanding about the nature of the relationship with your mother? Did you know anything more than just friends? To me, it seemed um, a lot different. It, de it did seem like they were more than friends, but when I would question either or, they would tell me that um, I was like just a child, I didn't know any better, of course they were just friends, and so on. Now, the, the man that we're talking about as Leon Jacob, do you see him here in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. Could you go ahead and just identify him by something that he's wearing? Uh, blue tie. Okay. Right over here to my right? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, may the record reflect that when this identified the defendant? The record will still reflect. And w what do you remember about the, the, the time you spent with your mother versus the time you spent with your father at that time? Do you remember how what the visitation was like with your dad? Um, well, when I was with my mom, it was a lot different. When I went to my dad's, I wouldn't stay there very often because they would always tell me certain things to, like, come back to them, like, or run away, in a sense. And, like, if I would, they would, like, take me out to dinner or certain instances like that. Okay, when you say, they told me to come back, they told me to run away from my dad's, who are you referring to as they? Leona, my mother. Okay. And was, was, was Mr. Jacob living with you all at the time? It seemed that way. Okay. What, and what do you mean by that? He would sleep over um, a lot. I would see him more often. Okay. Um, did, you ever, did, did you ever see him in the mornings when, he, when you just woke up, that sort of thing? Yes. Okay. What sort of things did you see about, well, let me ask you, were you present when there were any arguments between him and your mother? Yes. Uh, what, was the, what was the relationship like between him and your mom, if you remember? Did, was there a lot of arguments? Yes, there were. Okay. And what, what sort of things do you remember about those arguments involving the defendant? I just remember being scared, in a sense, because when he would get angry, he would get very angry, angry Excuse me, and it wasn't just like a normal fight between like a couple. It would be like a screaming match, and I just remember like faces like being red and angry and do you remember an incident involving uh, your brother and the defendant? Yes, I do. Could you tell us about what happened? Um, it was one of the day of my dad's visitations, um, and we they, there was a conversation. I came downstairs. I didn't want to go to my dad's because of all the things that they told me about him, like lies and stuff, and made me really not like my dad at the time, which all were not true. And he... I went downstairs, they were talking, my, Leon and my mother were talking about, like, a dinner that they were going to and, like, kind of rubbing it in my face, me being a 12-year-old wanting to go to a nice fancy restaurant. And so we went to my dad's for visitation and then my brother and I decided to run back to my mother's house. And when we did so, we got there and they kind of, like, needed a reason as to why we ran away. So they needed to, um... Like, what, what, what happened? Yeah. I, what okay, happened? they needed to like stage something like as if like my dad did something, so they decided to um, punch my brother in the chest. Okay, you said they decided to punch your brother. Who actually punched your brother? Leon did. Okay, and did you see that happen? Yes, I did. Okay, and could you describe for us how he did that? Well, we were in my my back room, and he had one shoulder on my brother, and he just like went right into his chest. And your, your brother was how old at the time? About 14, 15. Okay. Um, and you said he, he, you saw him strike your brother in the chest. Do you remember how many times he did it? I remember at least once or twice. Okay. And did your brother react to that at all? Did he say, ouch, or did he did He, he kind of toppled over, like, when you get hit in the stomach. Okay. And were you aware of the police being called or anything regarding that? I do not remember. Okay. Now, sometime later, your father got full custody of you and your brother, right? Yes. Um, and do you remember the last time that you saw the defendant? I do. Okay, could you tell us about that? So, um, we, were at, we were swimming at my house. Um, it was about three days before I was going to start my seventh grade year. And Leon was over with his son, and we were playing in the pool, and then my mom got this email. 
and she began to just kind of get mad. They had like a fight, and so he ended up getting kicked, like kicked out of my house. And then my, we locked the door, and um, he was kind of like had James on shorter running around the house, like saying, "Let." Yeah, you oh, got. Sorry. So yeah, she she's typing everything you're saying. So okay. uh, you're 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 a talker, I know. So yeah. just try and slow it down. Okay. I'm going to stop you and ask another question. Okay. You said he had James with him. Who's yes. James? His son. Okay. And do you remember how old James was at the time? I want to say two. Okay. He's a little kid. Yeah. Okay. Very. And you said he. I think you said he had James with him. He was holding him. And, and what was he doing? He was running around my house, um, knocking on the door, trying to get me to let him in. Okay. And did you? I did not. What happened after that? I remember briefly he tried to go around the back, um, but we also had locked that door. And then I remember him driving off in his car. And was that the last time you'd ever seen him? Yes. Okay. Until today? Yes. Okay. I'll pass it to this judge. Another pass, please. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mackenzie. My name is Matthew Pospisil. I'm just going to have a couple of quick questions for you. Um, now, I understand during this time that you first met Leon, your parents were going through a divorce. That's correct? Yes. And they were fighting over cover or custody of both you and Darren? Yes. So emotions are pretty tense between both parties. Would you agree? Between your father and your mother? Yes. Now, I know you said that during this time, there were a lot of arguments, screaming matches that would take place between Leon and Patricia, or Patty. Um, it's fair to say that it, it takes two people to have a fight, would you agree? Yes. And that it's not just always one person? Yes. Now, your father has full custody of you now, correct? Yes. So you live with him? Yes. And is he still with Holly? Yes. Do you like Holly now? I do. Very much. But at first you went the craziest about her, were you? That was because I was told things that were untrue. Well, but at first you went, you went her biggest fan. Because of the things I was told. Right, but so my question is, you went her biggest fan, is that correct? Because of the things I was told. Would you please respond to that question, so yes or no? Yes. You were not her biggest fan of Holly? Yes. Now, you mentioned earlier that you witnessed Leon punch Darren. Why didn't you call the cops at that time, or the police? I was told... I didn't know any better. I mean, I was just told of the things that were surrounding me. I mean... But the thought never occurred that maybe the police might need to get involved? Yes, the thought had occurred. Do you still have contact with Patricia at all? No. At this time of this divorce, was Patty drinking alcohol? Yes. Do you know if she was ever using any kind of other drugs? I do not. Was she drinking quite heavily? I do not remember. Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, pass. Just briefly, Judge. Uh, Mackenzie, do you remember uh, anything about the defendant in regards to seeing him drinking alcohol, smelling like alcohol, anything like that? Yes. Okay, could you tell us about that? I felt like every time that he would come over, he always smelled like alcohol. Okay. Did that concern you? It did, yes. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Nothing further, Your Honor. State calls Dale Johnson. This witness has not been sworn in, Judge. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm your testimony before the court be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Could you please state your name for the record? Dale R. Johnston. Mr. Johnston? Do you know an individual by the name of Leon Jacob? I do. How do you know him? He's my stepson. Are you married to Golda Jacob? I am. How long have you been married to Golda? 23 years. I'm sorry? 24 years. Okay. Um, 
When did you first meet the defendant? Uh, 1992. I'm sorry. I've got laryngitis too. Yeah. Okay. 1992. I want to talk to you about an incident that occurred between you and the defendant in this case. And I want to take you back to the home that you share with Golda Jacob. Do you recall an incident where you and the defendant got into an argument? I do. Do you recall what you were arguing about? No, I'm sorry, I don't recall the cause of the argument. Can you describe for the members of the jury when the argument began how the defendant was acting? Well, he was very loud. He was yelling at my wife. And uh, he got in her face, and I got into his. So when you say my wife, are you, you're talking about Golda Jacob? Yes, I am. So he's yelling at her and in, his, in her face, is that right? Yes. And so is that at that point that you intervene? Yes. What do you do? I got into his face, and I, I started to yell back at him. And what did he do in response? He, he shoved me, and I ended up on my back. Did it hurt? Yes. Did he continue screaming at you while you were on the ground? Uh, no. no. What happened after that? Uh, I think he left the room, and I wasn't seriously hurt. I got up and went about whatever I was doing. Did you call the police? No. Why didn't you call the police? Uh, I thought that this would just blow over, and I didn't want any more trouble. Did you know Megan Barakis? Yes. Um, and how did you know Megan? Oh, she used to come over with Leon all the time. Did you get along well with Megan? Yes. And did you and Megan have a good relationship? Yes. Judge, I pass the witness. From the defense? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Good morning, sir. Good morning. We, we briefly met, have we not? Yes. All right. My, again, to refresh your memory, my name is George Parnum, along with Matthew Popsil, who represent Leon Jacob. I just have a few questions for you on uh, what you've testified to on direct examination. Um, you and Golda have been married for how long? Since 1992. All right. <clears throat> and... Uh, as I take it, there was a <clears throat> argument going on between Golda and Leon. Yes. And was there any physical uh, confrontation going on between the two? No. She wasn't pushing him. He wasn't pushing her. No. Um, it, it was a, an argument between son and mother. Yes. Okay. And you had known Leon for quite some time? Yes. And you intervened in the argument, correct? Yes. And um, at this time, Leon... Uh, started arguing with you and gave you a shove to get you out of the argument between he and his mother. Yes. And he yelled at you? Yes. And you yelled back? Yes. Uh, and again, um, No police were called. No. Because you thought that this was kind of something that would blow over. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Johnson. I don't have anything further. You have anything? Nothing further from the state, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Next witness, please. State calls Leslie Jacob, Judge. And ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. All right, from the 
Thank you, sir. <clears throat> what is your name, ma'am? Leslie Levingston Jacob. And uh, are you are you're a lawyer, correct? Yes, sir, I am. And where do you work? I work for Golda Jacob and Associates. Okay. So you work for Leon Jacob's mother? I do. Okay. Um, how long have you been licensed for? I've been licensed for um, over 13 years. Okay. And uh, you're married to the defendant's brother, correct? I am. And do you have any children? We have two children. How old are your children? I have an 11-year-old, beautiful stepdaughter, and a 2-year-old. And so how long have you and Adam been married for? We've been married for four years. Now, um, as the sister-in-law, you obviously are familiar with Leon Jacobs, correct? I am. And uh, how far back do you go with him? When, when do you remember first meeting him? I met him um, my freshman year of college. Okay. So and, you've known him for a while? Yes, 1997. Okay. And did you know Megan Barricus? I knew Megan very well. Um, how, and how did you know her? Um, Leon introduced me when they um, started dating and she moved to Houston in um, 2014. And after the time that she moved to Houston, the two of you become good friends? Very good friends. Okay. Um, and you, you would think you would classify yourself as being a, a close or maybe her only close friend down here? Um, she had a, several other friends, but um, she, would, she became one of my best friends. Okay. I'm going to, to ask you about uh, some incidents that took place in January of last year. Okay. okay. Um, do you recall the date that Megan left uh, your brother-in-law, Leon Jacobs? I do. Okay. And could you tell us how you remember that date? Um, I remember that date because it was around 8.30 or 9 um, on a Thursday evening, I believe. Um, and my husband um, walked in our house with Megan. Um, I, the baby was already sleeping. She was a little over, she was one at the time, and um, my older daughter had just gone to bed. And before your bro, excuse me, your husband walked in with Megan, did you have any idea what had happened earlier in the evening? Did anybody call you or anything like that? Um, my husband called and said he'd be home late, that there was an incident at his mother's house and um, that everything's okay, but um, that he was just going to be over at his mother's for a little bit longer and uh, put the kids to sleep. And uh, did you talk to Megan about what had happened earlier in the evening? When she came to my house? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, what was her demeanor like when you saw her that night? Um, she was shaken, very upset. Um, she came in the house and um, I just, I didn't understand, I didn't know what had happened and um, she proceeded to tell me and Adam exactly what had happened. Okay. Did you see any sort of injuries on her body? Um, I did. Um, what did you see? Um, I saw handprint. Um, okay. It looked like a thumb indention and then some finger print on her face. And for the record, um, when you were explaining that, you were motioning towards your face. Um, so is it fair to say that when you saw the handprint on Megan, it was over the bottom part of her face? Correct. And she had a little mark on her lip as well. Um, and um, she didn't know if um, it was from when she said she, he. Objection is to. Okay, sorry. Okay. Sorry. But she did tell you what had happened earlier. Okay. Yes. I'll strike this. Do you know at that point whether the defendant knew where Megan was that night? He did not know where she was. Did you ever reach out to uh, the defendant and tell him where Megan was? No. Um, actually, um, she, Megan parked her car. Okay. Did Megan drive her own vehicle to your house? Yes, and she parked it about a mile down the street. My husband actually... That is not responsive to the question. Sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. So she did not park in front of your house? No, she did not. It was parked somewhere down the street? Yes. And how, how was it that she got from her car to your house? My husband followed her to park her car down the street and brought her, drove his car to park in our driveway and brought her in the house. Uh, was there any, if you remember, was there any contact between yourself and the defendant any time that night? Thursday night, no. Okay. What about in the following days? Um, Friday evening, um, we had told Megan that she could stay with us as long as she wanted. Um, and um, Friday evening... Um, I, I, I don't know what happened, but Leon found out that Megan would, had stayed at our house the night before. And um, he started texting that he wanted me to talk to her. And I told him that she needed her space 
and that he just needed to, we were having a girls' night, just the two of us, and just to let her be right now. And you, you mentioned it a moment ago, but you said the defendant was looking to contact the, or excuse me, looking to get a hold of Megan or get back with Megan through you. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. He was kind of relying on you to, to, to mend the gap between the two of them. Yes, constantly. Okay. And so when you say constantly, are you referring to multiple calls or text messages? He, he sent me hundreds of text messages um, uh, saying that if I didn't get them back together. And, and what, what was the content of those messages? Um, that I had to help um, him get back with her and um, that anything that didn't happen was basically my fault. And uh, did he ever show up at your house? He did on Friday evening. Okay, what, what happened when he showed up on Friday evening? Um, Megan and I were having a girls' night um, and the baby was sleeping. My husband had my older daughter out of the house. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, my husband had my older daughter out of the house, actually was taking her to um, see her mother. And um, I just put the baby down and Megan and I had ordered takeout. And um, there was a knock on the front door and um, I thought it was takeout. And so I went and opened the door and um, Leon rushed in the house looking for Megan. Now, was there any other time either you saw uh, the defendant at your house or was there evidence that he'd been by your house? There was. Um, Earlier that day, um, there was flowers left on the front doorstep with a card um, for Megan. Okay. And you just assumed that was from, from the defendant? Um, he had texted me and said that he dropped off something for Megan. Okay. And, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, so back to that night, you answer the door, the defendant pushes the door open. What, what happens after that? Um, he came in the house and screaming, I know Megan's here, where, where is that bitch? Um, and I was like, Leon, she's not here. Please don't wake the baby. Please just leave. And I just kept saying, she's not here, she's not here. But she truly was there, correct? She was, and yes. Did you know where she was at that time that you're, you're confronting the defendant? I didn't know at that time where she had hidden. Um, I found out after I got him out of the house. And where was he in the house looking for Megan, if you remember? Um, well, he came in our front door, and um, he saw the flowers that he had brought in, I think, her purse or some bag um, in our kitchen bar area. Um, not bar area, our island area with some bar stools. Um, and he went upstairs um, where the, our extra bedroom is, um, came back down, and um, I kept saying, she's not here, she's not here. And uh, did he ultimately believe you? Um, he did after I called my husband on the phone and I told him that did, Liam, Liam wouldn't leave the house and I wanted him to leave immediately. He was waking the baby up. Okay. Uh, what, were you, what were you going through at that time? What were you feeling about what was happening? I was, I was scared. I was really scared. Um, I, I was scared for Megan. I was scared he was going to find her. I was really upset. He burst in my house and um, woke the baby up, and um, yeah. Uh, did you ever consider calling the police? I did. Um, my husband said if he wouldn't leave to call the police. Okay. And did he ultimately leave? He did. Okay. And it was shortly thereafter in, the, in the, the following days that Megan decided to leave your house and go stay somewhere else? Megan left that night. She packed up her stuff. I couldn't convince her to stay. She didn't feel safe, and um, she told me she would not tell me where she was going. Did you know where she was going when she left your house? She said she was going to a hotel property that either she worked for or that she could she could stay somewhere. Oh, sorry. Um, did following that incident, did you have further communication with the defendant about Megan? Yes. And what was the nature of, of those communications? Um, at first, it was that I needed to help her. Um, speak with him, facilitate some meeting or something like that. And then after that, it was just um, anger. And Do you know why he was angry at you regarding what was going on with Megan? He 
believe that I told Megan about him and Valerie and that that's the reason why Megan didn't want to be with him. But I didn't even know about him and Valerie until after he was arrested for the stalking charges. Okay. Uh, did, did he display a lot of anger towards you once he believed that you are an obstacle between him and Megan getting back together? What, what, sort, what sort of behavior did he display towards you once he believed that you had you were you were getting you were getting in between him and Megan. He sent nasty text messages to my entire family, um, calling me names, saying that I wasn't family, that I wasn't blood. Um, tried to get me fired. <laughs> um, just said horrible things to my husband about me, and yeah. So he just horrible things. Did your husband ultimately step in and say, and, and, and deal with the defendant and say, enough is enough, leave my family alone? He did. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Yes. If I have a yeah. Did you, uh, we've met. Yes, sir. Did, did you give a statement to uh, the police about what happened? No, sir. Okay. Um, did you attempt to contact the police about what happened? About the evening he came in my house? Right. No, sir. Okay. Um, was it obvious? I think you testified, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that Leon thought that you were very protective of Bacon. Um, he knew we were very close friends. I don't know about protective because there was nothing to protect her about uh, until this incident occurred that I knew of. Okay. And he's familiar enough with your house correct, whereby he could come in and could walk upstairs? Yes, sir. He had been in our house. He was familiar with our house. Okay. And uh, he was he was looking for me, was he not? Yes, sir. Now, this issue about the flowers, had the flowers been on the, um, in front of the front door um, before he got there? Yes, sir. When I, I got him from work, there were no flowers there. And then Megan came over, and then he texted that he had put something for Megan on the front porch. All right. And did you open the door to find out what they were? Or did yes, they... sir. I did. Right. I, I believe I did. Yes, sir. Okay. And what kind of flowers were they? They were really pretty bouquet of flowers. I don't recall what kind of flowers. Was there a card attached? Yes, sir. And would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what the card said? I, I never read the card. I didn't open it. Okay. Was it addressed to Megan? I believe it said Megan. All right. Well, you knew it wasn't for you. Correct. I knew it wasn't for me. He had texted me and told me that they were for Megan. And um, would you, you've received flowers in the past, have you not? Yes, sir. And the flowers are normally accompanied by a card from the person sending them. Yes, sir. And there's something normally affectionate in the card, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you see any difference in this particular situation as far as the content of that card is concerned? I, I, I don't know what the card said, but I'm sure it was some sort of apology or something like that for his actions. Uh, and it was obvious to you that he was trying to get back to Macon? Yes, sir, at that time, yes. Okay. Now, you had worked on, you, you were working with, uh, what law firm? Um, my mother-in-law's law firm, Golda Jacob & Associates. Oh, okay. And uh, during that period of time that you were working there, uh, Golda was uh, involved in Valerie's divorce. Yes, sir. 
And as a matter of fact, you all were representing Valerie. That is correct. And you worked on Valerie's divorce, did you not? I did. Okay. Please help me now. You mentioned, I think, that you saw Leon up at the office. Yes, sir. There was nothing unusual about that, was there? Um, at what time point? Because um, there started being some unusual activity at the office. Right. Um, so. Okay. But the very fact that he was went to the office, nothing unusual about going to the office. Every Not once in a while. About what happened, but nothing unusual about him going to his mother's office. No, he'd show up there occasionally. And again, um, he wanted you to facilitate a communication between he and Megan. Yes, sir. And that was for the purpose of trying to convince her to come back to him. Yes, sir. Now, I believe you testified that you did not know about Valerie and Leon. Uh, until the night of the confrontation. No, sir. I, I didn't know that they were living together and co cohabitating um, until I saw him. I was the one that saw him getting arrested for the stalking. Um, I knew that they had previously had sex in 2014 before Megan moved to Houston. All right. Well... Uh, and again, you worked on Valerie's divorce. Yes. So obviously you would know about Leon and Valerie prior to that night, correct? Yeah, back in 2014, yes, sir. I didn't know they had an ongoing relationship and that she was back in the picture and when he was with Megan. Thank you. Ma'am, you mentioned uh, something about there being some unusual activity at the office um, regarding the defendant. What did you mean by that? Well, um, he started coming up to the office a lot more frequently. Um, I want to say in January of 2017. And um, uh, it was just a lot of coming up in there. Um, uh, trying to get me to contact Megan, um, trying to um, get in touch with her and everything. And he, I mean, it wasn't odd for him to come and see his mom at work, you know, once a week, once every couple weeks, but it was just a lot more frequently at that in January. Okay. I'll pass away instead. And, and the purpose of that, of those visits, uh, he was trying to contact Megan through your office because he knew that you all had a relationship with her, right? Yes, sir. And he wanted to see if you could facilitate a meeting between Megan and himself so that Megan could come back to him and they could go on down the road of life happily ever after, right? Um, yes, but I... What was his desire, correct? I don't know what his desire was. I know he wanted to contact her and speak with her to try and make things better. Sure, to make things better. Pass the witness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. State calls Annie Morrison. This witness has not been sworn in, Judge. Richard Ryan. You swear to affirm your testimony before the court be the truth of all of this. <clears throat> and that's about the truth so Yes. Thank you. Could you please state your name for the record? Annie Morrison. And Ms. Morrison, where do you currently live? I live in a suburb outside of Chicago, Illinois. Did you fly down here um, at our request? Yes, I did. Do you know an individual by the name of Leon Jacob? Yes. How do you know him? He's my ex-husband. Okay. I want to walk you back in time to when you first met uh, the defendant in this case. When did you first meet him? 
I met Leon in 1996 at the University of Texas at Austin. Were you both students there? Yes. Um, and did you begin dating right away? Pretty much right away, yes. While you were at the University of Texas and you're dating the defendant, um, talk to us about your relationship early on. Sure. Um, our relationship was um, fun. Leon was very spontaneous. We had a, a good time together. It was also volatile. Um, when we fought, they were big fights, lots of screaming. Um, there were, you know, incidents where he threw my clothes off the balcony of his uh, apartment complex. Um, like I said, lots of screaming. So it was, it was up and down. When you're dating him in college, looking back now, you know, hindsight's 2020. But were there some flags back then that maybe you kind of overlooked? Yes, I think so. Looking back now, um, I think the screaming was one of them. Thank you. Uh, the screaming, it was it was intense and it was it was in my face screaming. Um, certainly throwing the clothes my clothes over his balcony. Um, and then I think Leon was somebody who people either really warmed up to quickly and loved or... What was the defendant's personality like back then? Um, he was very brash, very in your face, had a very big personality. Did you date all through college? Yes. And after college, did you all eventually get married? Yes, we did. When did you get married? In December of 2001. During that time, were the two of you living together? Yes, we were. Okay. Where was the defendant living? Uh, we were living in Grenada. He was in medical school there, and we were living there. And did you stay there with him the whole time that you were in, that he was in medical school there? No. Where did you go? I stayed there for a semester after we were married, and then went back to the Chicago area for the summer. And after the summer was over, I went to New York to go to law school. The two of you during that time period still obviously communicating, still married, all that kind of stuff? Yes. At some point, did the defendant join you in New York? Yes, he did. What was he doing in New York during that time? He was completing the last few years of medical school, so he was doing rotations at a hospital. Do you know how it was going for him in medical school at that time? Uh, as far as I knew, it was going well. Did there come a time when you all were living in New York where the fights escalated and where you became more fearful of the defendant? Yes, there was a time that we got into a fight and he pulled a knife on me. Okay, tell us about that. I don't recall what the fight was about. Um, I recall we were in our apartment and he pulled out a pocket knife, is how I would describe it, where the blade flipped out and he held it up. I, I don't recall what he said, but I recall feeling threatened by it and that he was threatening me with the knife. What were you thinking when he pulled that knife on you? Um, I was scared. I was scared that he would come at me with the knife. Did he eventually put the knife down? He did, yes. Did you tell anyone about what had happened or let the police know or anything like that? No, I did not. Why not? Um, it was, it was surreal, if that makes sense. Um, it, it felt like it couldn't really have happened, and I thought it was something that would never happen again. I wanted to believe it was something that would never happen again. Did you all stay in New York? We stayed in New York until 2006. And then where did you go? To Houston. We came to Houston. What did you come to Houston for? We came for Leon to take a job at Baylor. A residency at Baylor. Why didn't he stay in New York and complete his residency in New York? His contract with the hospital was not renewed. Do you know why it was not renewed? I do not. So when you come to Houston, do you all get an apartment or a home? Where do you live? We got an apartment, yes. And he's attending Baylor. What are you doing at the time? I was working at a law firm. So you're practicing lawyer at that time, taking the bar, all that kind of stuff? Yes. Talk to us about your time down here in Houston. What year are we talking about approximately? We lived in Houston from 2006 to 2010. Um, during that time, we had one child in 2009. And 
uh, subsequently, after after having our first son, um, the arguments and the fights began to escalate again. So prior to moving to Houston and him pulling the knife on you, in you on you, excuse me, in New York, had anything physical happened? No. And then you mentioned that you had a son. With yes. Him. What changed once you had your son? I think it was difficult for Leon to um, focus on something other than what, what he wanted to do. The responsibility, obviously, having a child um, is very great, and I think that was very difficult for him. He had a hard time um, giving up his, his freedom and his free time to do things that we needed to do for our family. So during that time period, who's paying the bills? I was. And who's taking care of your son? I was. Who would take, who would do grocery shopping and home errands and things like that? I did. You mentioned while you were in college that he threw your clothes off the balcony. Did he do something similar to that when you were living here in Houston? Yes, we got in an argument. We lived on a, uh, the third floor of our apartment building and he threw my clothes down the stairs. We lived close to the stairway. We were the end apartment, and he threw my clothes down the stairwell. Were you concerned for your safety at this time? Yes. Why didn't you leave? Um, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed that this was happening to me. Um, I consider myself a pretty strong person, and... I didn't want anyone to know that this was happening. Um, we also had a son together, and I was concerned about, I grew up with both my parents. I was concerned about my son growing up in a broken home and how difficult that would be for him. Um, and I wanted, I, I was in love with Leon, and I wanted to believe that things would change. Did he continue while you were in Houston to get more and more physical with you? Yes. Yes. Describe that for me. Um, he would push me, um, grab my arms or my shoulders, kick me, push me against the wall. Would he leave bruises? Yes. Would people ask you about those? Sometimes, yes. And what would you tell them? I lied. I would make something up and say that I had bumped my arm or bumped my leg against a table or a wall or something like that. <coughs> a considerable amount.